Hey guys, welcome to the JVR Industries Inc. YouTube channel. Thanks for checking us out. In this video, we are going to vacuum seal and sous vide a couple steaks. We've got a ribeye and a T-bone that look amazing, uh, provided by Valence Meats in Lancaster, New York. All right, so based on a recommendation from the guys at sous vide everything, we are going to skip the butter. Um, sometimes I'll use butter when I am vacuum sealing and then dropping them into a sous vide bath. But in this case, we're gonna skip it because I learned that butter does not necessarily make everything better. But in this case, we are just gonna use some kosher salt, uh, salt both sides generously, and then get them in the, the JVR Vac 100 and get them sealed up. Now, well, I'm by no means an expert, but I definitely like to go generous on the salt. I would definitely recommend using a kosher salt. So for this cook and vacuum seal, we are going to use um, an 8x12. This is an 8x12 3 mil pouch, back pouch that we will use for the ribeye. It's a, a boneless, there is no bone in on this guy. Um, so that is more than sufficient for that. And then for the T-bone, I am using a uh, 10 by 13 uh, 4 mil. And I'm also going to, because of how sharp this bone is, I'm also going to use some vac guard. So this is sold in a roll. Um, a continuous roll, it's perforated every five inches. In this case, I could probably get away with one piece, but I'm just gonna take a second piece off there. We'll start with that. Now what you wanna do with this is basically an extra thick layer of uh, plastic protection. Uh, just a quick uh, little tip, if you're sealing up a steak and you're concerned and you don't have vac guard, um, you could take a bag and cut the end off the bag and basically wrap it around the bone, so kind of doubling it up, that is a good way to do it. Uh, but this does work better than that would so I would recommend the back guard. You're basically just wrapping it around the end of the bone like that before you place it into the bag. So as an added precaution I always recommend doing this. Uh, you want to wipe the seal area off. Uh, if you have a lot of fat or blood in this area then when you go to seal it, it's not going to do an adequate job and you might have an issue where your seal is compromised. So especially because we're sous vide we want to make sure that that seal holds up during the whole cook and we don't have any issues. So uh, it doesn't take much, just wipe it down with a little bit of paper towel and uh, you're ready to go. So I'm using a vacuum cycle with 30, uh, 35 seconds of vacuum time. And since this is a formal bag, I have our seal time set to two seconds. So especially when you're sous vide after the vacuum process is done, I always like to take a look at the seal. And with this machine, you get a really nice wide six millimeter seal. So I'm not concerned that it's not going to hold up. I'm just making sure that the heat time was set high enough. So I will just give this a good tug. And that's welded really good. I'm not getting any pull apart there. So uh, that's ready for the, the sous vide cooker. Now we're just gonna do the same thing with our ribeye. And this machine does have the hold down clips. You don't have to use them, um, it's just an option. I like using them, but there's sometimes if I'm in a big hurry, um, I'll just go over top of them and not use them. We're gonna cook these in the sous vide bath at 135, which is just on the high side of medium rare. Uh, we're gonna throw these in here for two hours. Uh, you can leave it in there for an extra hour or two usually. You can go up to four hours without actually having a negative effect on the product in, in any way. You could leave it in there even longer, but eventually with steaks, it will start to break down the tissues if you exceed uh, four hours, especially if you get up in the six, eight hour range. So two hours I kind of found is a nice sweet spot. And I use these clips. Uh, there's a million different contraptions for cooking sous vide. Um, and this is actually our three gallon chamber accessory, which can be repurposed as a sous vide cooker. So it kind of works as that. And I would also just cover this 
uh, with some sort of cover. You can use aluminum foil. I typically will use aluminum foil and kind of just surround it so that we don't have much evaporation of the water. For a two-hour bath, you really don't need to do much of anything. And that's all set, and we'll come back in two hours and check those out. Okay, so it's been two hours, so I'm gonna take these out of the bath, and the only other thing we're gonna to need to do is give them a nice sear. Pretty sous vide, then you are used to uh, the look of a steak after it comes out. They do not look as appealing as you would think, but once you get these either on the grill, cast iron, uh, you can sear them with a torch. There's a variety of different methods. These things are gonna look beautiful and taste amazing. Okay, so we're gonna finish these off in a cast iron griddle. We're gonna get a nice sear on them so that they finish off real well. Uh, we are going to use a paper towel. You wanna to get these nice and dry in order to get a good sear. Uh, moisture is definitely your enemy when it comes to searing a steak. So you wanna make sure you pat them dry on both sides before you get them on that cast iron griddle. And you want to put a little bit of oil in your pan um, until you start seeing it smoking. That tells you that it's hot enough.